I think that I fell in love with it because once I left home and I moved to Memphis, I wasn't going to like my grandmother's church anymore where, you know, like the raw singing that I was hearing there was a lot like the Carter family's singing or my parents' church, you know. And I took a time when I wasn't really close to my family. I was like a young child, like 18 years old, fresh off the boat to Memphis, and I was just hanging out and meeting people, and you know, I just wasn't very close. But when I listened to people like the Carter family saying you gotta walk that lonesome highway, it reminded me of my grandmother's church, of my parents' church. It reminded me of home. We met through Kevin Agunas. There's three producers on the record, and Kevin is one of them, and he is friends with Dan, and they've been working together, and he asked me if I wanted to write songs with anybody. I said, yeah, I want to write with either Dan Auerbach, Gillian Welsh, or M. Ward. I love the way they write. They're modern-day writers that I know have a sensibility for old-time roots music. He said, well, I, I do know Dan, so let me call him. We were at Central Barbecue in Memphis in this long line waiting to get a barbecue sandwich. And he called Dan and Dan was like, well, I'm on tour in Europe right now, but when I get back, send me some of her music and we'll see. So he sent them The Drifter, which is a video I had online of me in my bedroom here in New York with the pizza plywood on the floor, playing my banjo and, you know, doing stomping and stuff. And he sent that song and I was like, yeah, we can write together. So we started writing together and we ended up writing four tunes that we really liked a lot. And I didn't know he was working on the studio at that time. So after he finished the studio, he was like, we just finished writing songs. He said, hey, we should record some. So that's what we did, and from there, you know, Kevin was involved in that, and then after I'd done the things with them, then I was like, I still need something else. So when I met the Hungarian musicians, I recorded in Budapest with Peter Schabach some The Working Woman Blues, which is the opening track, and it just has a lot. It has a lot of influences. Like I said, many teachers, many, many teachers. It was really shocking to be asked to do something like that. It came about through his manager and my manager, and they wanted a girl to wear the red dress to sing back up for Eric. And his manager also manages Dan with the black keys and was like, who, who could wear this red dress? Which girl, like Cinderella, who, which, which one would wear the shoe? And so he said, I think Valerie Jean could wear this red dress. Let me call and see if she's available. And I was on tour in Europe and I was like, yeah, I was a little bit like the gray of the UK had me so down. And I was just like, my manager called me and I was like, yeah, send me the music. I'll listen to it and maybe I can do it. And I listened to the song like Jesus does. And I was like crying, it's such a beautiful song and the message. And I was just like, absolutely, I have to do it. And then they sent a picture of the red dress. And I was like, oh, I'm so in clothes and fashion. I was like, I get to wear the red dress too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm doing it. So when I came back, I had rehearsed the song, you know, time and time again on the road, you know, just listening to it in my headphones and memorizing the lyrics. And Eric and I went for our dress rehearsal at MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And I said to Eric, we just went through it like two times for the dress rehearsal. And I was like, oh my God, I saw like, a sign that Reva was gonna sit here, Stevie Wonder sitting here, you know, all of these people that are my, I was like, Eric, um, can we rehearse some more, please? And it ended up being really beautiful for me to sing with him. His voice is so country, but it's soulful. And his picking on the guitar, I was like, the man can play. He can play, now that's the musician right there. People from Humboldt, Tennessee, which is where I'm from, they were like, you know, I mean, they were tuned in and they were like, oh my God, I think that was Valerie. <laughs> so when I got off from the performance, oh, my Facebook and my email and my cell phone and everything, it was blowing up. And the reason why it was so cool is because, you know, we planned it to be a mystery. And so it's kind of neat that it was a surprise for people. People don't get that many surprises, you know, <laughs> like that.